Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. When I lived in California during law school, uh, I had an account with a uh, bank account with Wells Fargo. And they had the coolest ATM cards. A really, really cool design of a stagecoach on it. It was a really, really cool ATM card. And um, I remember in later years hearing the story about how they got busted for setting up fake bank accounts for their customers without their customers' knowledge. And it was such a weird story, and they got in so much trouble for it. I thought to myself, that is just a one-off. There's no way, no way anything like that could ever happen again because it's such a stupid thing to be doing. It's so easy to get caught at it. And because you're regulated by the feds, Bad things will happen when you hit the news with something like that. So that that couldn't happen again. Scott and John sent me a story from CBS News. U.S. Bank opened fake accounts for unsuspecting customers. Now, here I'm not talking about a U.S. Bank. I'm talking about U.S. Bank. That's the bank. Not Wells Fargo. This is another bank that appears to have done a very similar thing to which I thought would never be done again. Because it was just too stupid. Megan Cerullo wrote this for CBS News. One of the largest banks in the U.S. illegally opened accounts for customers without their permission, according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. You might say, Steve, wait, why would they open an account for somebody without their knowledge? That makes no sense. Well, here's how it makes sense. Uh, the bank parent, the big big corporate bank parent, think of the, think of the organization says, we have a new goal. We're going to try to get more savings accounts. We need more savings accounts. So they start leaning on the branches going, how many, how many savings accounts do you guys have right now? And they give them a number and they go, okay, we want you to increase that by 10%. And if you increase it by 10%, you get bonuses. So they start asking everyone who comes in, you want a savings account? No. Want a savings account? No. What do you do? Well, somebody who's got a checking account with $50,000 in it, you sneak five out of that and put it into a savings account for $5,000. And you just say, well, a person now has got a checking account with 45 in it and a savings account with five in it. And you just open a savings account. There you go. What, what's, what's, what, how, how do you not see that? Well, the problem is that a person is not paying real close attention to their bank and their banking might not know that they have a savings account. And worse... Um, they just took money out of somebody's account without their permission. Now, it's true they didn't steal it because they put it into an account in that person's name, but they misappropriated it somehow. Now, you know, I know somebody was saying, Steve, steal or misappropriate, what's the difference? Steal is where I take it from you with the intent to deprive you of it. And they could make the argument that we simply slid it into a savings account. You're not deprived of it. You can withdraw that at any time, or you can put it right back in this checking account if you knew about it. So... (laughs) U.S. Bank is based in Minneapolis. It's the country's fifth largest bank. They've got over half a half a trillion dollars in assets. Uh, and they accessed unsuspecting customers' credit reports and then opened checking and savings accounts, credit cards, and lines of credit without customers' authorization also in order to boost sales. That was found by the CFPB in a five-year-long investigation. So it's not just opening up the fake savings accounts. But they're also doing things like the credit cards and so on. U.S. Bank knew its employees were opening the unauthorized accounts, but failed to regulate them, according to the agency. The bank imposed sales goals on workers and introduced an incentive compensation program that financially rewarded employees for selling its products like deposit accounts and fake credit cards. I think I would have announced if I was a manager. At the same time we announce the program and say you get a bonus for every savings account you open. The second you open a fake one, you're fired. Oh? (laughs) Takes the fun out of the contest, doesn't it? For over a decade, U.S. Bank knew its employees were taking advantage of its customers by misappropriating consumer data to create fictitious accounts, says the CFPB director. We all must do more to hold law-breaking companies accountable when they abuse and misuse our sensitive personal data. The illegal actions harmed the bank's customers by hurting their credit scores, according to regulators. Customers were also forced to close unauthorized accounts and seek refunds on fees they were charged. So somehow they were given accounts they didn't know about and then charged fees for things that went wrong with those accounts they didn't know about. 
A spokesperson for U.S. Bank told CBS Money Watch that only a fraction of the company's account holders were affected and that the practices date back several years. A spokesperson, let me change the verb here. A spokesperson for U.S. Bank admitted to CBS Money Watch that the practices date back several years. See, when a party makes a statement that hurts them, it can be used against them in court and it's called an admission. So a spokesperson for U.S. Bank admitted to CBS Money Watch that the practices date back several years. Now, the bit about it being only a fraction of the company's account holders, you know that half is a fraction, right? One millionth is a fraction. Three quarters is a fraction. (laughs) Technically, one over one is a fraction, but it's an improper fraction. I understand that. But the point is that to say it is only a fraction literally is meaningless, but the admission that it goes back several years may come back to haunt them. Today's settlement related to legacy sales practices involving a small percentage of accounts dating back to 2010. Since 2016, the bank has made process and oversight improvements that have been effective in addressing these sales practices and concerns, they said. The question is, why didn't they say they've stopped? Have they stopped these things? Have they? It says here, involves only a small percentage. Now, a small percentage is better than a fraction because a small percentage implies, I'm guessing, less than half, right? 51% would be a small percentage. 49% theoretically, because it's smaller than the other part, right? So the CFPB is fining U.S. Bank $37.5 million, which will be paid out to consumers who have been harmed by violations a federal consumer financial protection law, U.S. Bank must also return all unlawfully charged fees to its customers with interest. And the question is, did you know this happened to you? So if you didn't know and they know it, will they return the money to you? Wells Fargo engaged in a similar scheme in which bank employees open unauthorized accounts for existing clients. That company was fined $3 billion, including a $500 million civil penalty, to be distributed to its investors. So as a $3 billion fine, the U.S. bank fine is only $37.5 million. So I suspect it's smaller scale. It's hard to say. But uh, it is crazy that these things happen. And so I would urge you, urge you, and I know most of the people in my audience are probably already doing this, But if you have a bank account and you are capable of tracking it online, you you can log into it, enter a password, and then look at the bank statement, including all activity up to the moment or at least the day before, right? And so I'm going to tell you right now, I've got a bank account. (laughs) I've actually got several because as an attorney, I kind of have to. And I can log on. And look at them. And I do. I do. And the weirdest thing is I've found stuff on there where I'm like, what is that? What? What? Huh? <laughs> and I think I mentioned this recently. Yeah, this wasn't a bank account. This is actually a, 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 a credit card. But I check my bank accounts, my credit cards, and they're all basically the same thing in that you should keep up on them. And I logged on one day and I'm looking at this thing and it goes, you were charged $4 at 2 o'clock this morning by a company in another state. And I looked at the company, didn't recognize it. It's a $4 charge, four bucks. So I clicked on it and I said, uh, what is this? And I got a thing back very quickly saying, oh, the company has uh, uh, removed that charge. The, com- the company has removed the charge. Who was it and why did they charge me $4? And they came back and they said, it's been removed. And that was all I could ever get from them. Somebody had apparently gotten my information and charged me four bucks to see if I'd catch it. Four dollars. And you understand that if you do that a thousand times, four bucks a pop, that's got to be a good, I don't know, three thousand (laughs) dollars. My point is that a lot of these transactions that you hear about with U.S. Bank or Wells Fargo or whatever, it might just be five, ten, fifteen dollars, thirty-five dollars, whatever it is for different fees and so on that you got hurt. But if they do it to enough people, it's a huge amount of money. 
And so the crazy part is that not only were the people at the banks doing this, that is opening up the bogus accounts, it appears that management knew about it and approved, and the overall management knew about it and didn't do anything about it, which would imply that they, impro- they approved of it. So it's, it's, a, it's a crazy scam. It's the weirdest scam. I, I've heard a lot of weird scams out there. Uh, I've been practicing law for 31 years. I'll admit that I was fascinated by this kind of stuff before I became a lawyer. And even after becoming a lawyer, I study this stuff even in the fields I don't practice in. And right now I practice entirely lemon law, but I still study this stuff. And I also have hosted talk shows and so on. And, and I've always looked at these stories and I'm fascinated by them. And the fake bank account scam run by the bank itself to me is one of the craziest, weirdest, dumbest scams. But sadly, I'm willing to bet you that if you ran an accounting on what they did, on how much they got fined, how much they've been penalized in whatever ways, and how much they made, I bet they still came out ahead. I'd bet money on that. And the reason I bet money on that is Wells Fargo got hit for $3 billion, (laughs) and U.S. Bank went ahead and did this. And their spokesperson admits they did it. (laughs) So uh, the the practices date back several years. They admit that. They admit that. So crazy story. U.S. Bank opened fake accounts for unsuspecting customers. Megan Cerullo wrote that for CBSNews.com. Scott and John both sent it. There you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Originality is the fine art of remembering what you hear, but forgetting where you heard it.